Okay, so this investigation, we are looking at how light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis. We've been looking at with pond weeds, which we've got in the beaker already because it's a bit of a faff to set up. So we had to fill the beaker with water, put our pond weed in the bottom, and then put a filter funnel on top of our pond weed. We're making sure the pond weed is entirely inside our filter funnel. We have got two strips of plasticine just to hold the filter funnel in place because obviously it's quite light, it will actually start to float in the water. When we're looking at our practical then, what our independent variable is, is our light intensity. So we're going to change the amount of light that we give our pond. We're going to start with 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, up until we reach 30 centimetres. We're then going to measure the amount of oxygen bubbles that is produced and we're going to use our test tube for that, the boiling tube, because we're going to place it on top. We're then the volumes that we're going to keep the same. We're going to add a spatula of sodium hydrocarbonate as it's going to control the amount of carbon dioxide available to our pond weed and the volume of water inside the beaker. So as we know, then plants also need water. For photosynthesis, we're going to make sure that each time we have the same amount of water, we're not going to change it. So first thing we do, then we put the beaker of water inside, then our pond weed and the filter funnel on top. I also then have to fill my boiling tube of water, so give me two seconds. I need to make sure that my boiling tube is completely full of water. So as you can see, I've gone over and I need to tip it and put it on top of my fil filter funnel and make sure no water leaves. That's the trickiest part of this experiment. So I'm going to give it a go. It's not always successful because you will lose some. Like I lost all of it then. I have to change beaker because we have too big a hand so then we can actually tip it over. So we've tipped our boiling tube full of water. If you can see if I open it, that it is actually full of water still inside. And then we're going to be able to count the bubbles produced from our pond weed as it goes up the boiling tube in that one minute. I did say we have to add one spatula of our sodium hydrogen carbonate. We're going to add it into our water. Okay. And this is going to control the amount of carbon dioxide available. The one major hazard is that the lamp can get hot the longer it's going to be on for, it's going to get hot so it can burn. So this is just how we can burn ourselves. So we need to make sure we're being very careful when we are adding the lamp when we need it to burn. So we've got it in the box and we've got to put our hydrogen on top so we can burn it outside. So the first thing we need to do is then I need to measure five centimetres away from my boiling tube. Move my boiling tube to the end so I know that it's five centimetres. Using a ruler, I'm going to measure five centimetres and then I'm going to place my lamp directly five centimeters and then i am going to time one minute and in that one minute i'm going to count how many bubbles are produced from our pond weed <laughs>5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 centimetres, you should have a set of the results. In the specified pack, you haven't actually got to do repeats, but that is something which you could do to check how repeatable it is and even check the producibility with different members in the class. So you will see then that the further away you go from the um, pond weed, that the number of bubbles decreases. So as distance increases, the number of bubbles will decrease because light is a major um, factor needed for photosynthesis. So the less light available, the less photosynthesis is going to be taking place. In that case, it's actually really quite hard to look through the beaker and the boiling tube to count the number of bubbles, especially the closer we are because more bubbles are coming. So to improve the inaccuracy of counting the bubbles, you could record it and then you can go back and like in slow motion then look at and count the number of bubbles to be very specific. You could also then use a digital use a data logger which could actually measure the amount of carbon dioxide in the water to give exact readings to make your results more accurate. Thank you.